this is what the Bible says in the book of Exodus 33, 14 through 16. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? Look at this part. What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people of the face of the earth? That's a great question. What distinguishes the believer from anybody else on the face of the earth? And the am answer is simple. Moses is telling you it's the presence of a living God actively working in your life. Now the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he comes with gifts. But if you want to see a great move of God, you got to learn to be obedient to God. A great move of God requires great obedience to God. I would not be blessed today if I was disobedient. My marriage would fall apart if I wasn't obedient. I don't go apologizing to my wife because I'm such great, such a great man, and I've managed to control my emotions. My emotions get the best of me every time. The only reason I go apologize is because God says, go apologize, you're wrong. And when God speaks to your heart, humility will change the course of your life. When the Lord tells you to do something, obey it when you know what is right do right you can't do wrong and expect right great move of God requires great obedience to God and if we want to move of God we must revive our reverence for the word of God put God's word back in our sermons in our music in our poetry in our music in our movies in our podcasts in our social media posts, believers should be shining Christ wherever they go. Moses revered God so much that he said, what's the point of going to a promised land if you're not there? Many people want the promised land so bad that they, they don't even realize that God is no longer with them on their chase to the promised land. I don't want to get anything that God promised me if God ain't with it. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I don't want God's hand. I want God's heart. Because the blessing is not his hands. The blessing is him. The spirit-filled life is not a special deluxe edition of Christianity for the people on the stage. It is the only edition God intended for his followers. The power of God actively working in our life is what distinguishes us from everybody else. And what do you mean by that, Pastor? It simply means this. That on my own, I cannot obey and follow what God calls me to do. How many of you ever struggled with addictions in this room? There might be people in this room right now still struggling with addictions. You might be smoking weed. You might be smoking cigarettes. You might be addicted to alcohol. You might be addicted to pornography. Those are like the addictions we always call out. But there's people in this room, you're controlled by anger. You're addicted to anger. Anger is your first response. You might be somebody in this room controlled by bitterness. Because all addiction is, is an outward thing controlling the person. So you might not have a, an addiction, but you do have something that controls you. This is what distinguishes us. In our flesh, we fail at fixing that. But God didn't just want you to come to him and fix yourself. He wants you to come to him and surrender. And when you surrender, he gives you the spirit to help you live a victorious life. A lot of people want the presence, the 
gifts of the power, but not the power of the presence. Y'all get that? A lot of people want the presence, but they don't want the power of the presence. The gifts are, they want to be able to prophesy and speak in tongues. And I see the Lord saying, Sarah, I see the Lord saying, Sarah, I see the Lord saying. <laughs> they want the, the power, the presence, the gifts. But they don't want the power of the presence in their life actively telling them that all the people you're trying to change, I'm trying to change you. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live God's word. One thing I desire, and one thing I want to see is for the people of God live victorious in the things of God. And yesterday at the conference, the theme was customization. And that word is still lingering with me. Because the truth is, I would love to be able to customize my life. I'd love to be able to select the car I want to drive select how my next few years are going to go come on somebody for those of you who got little children don't you wish you could customize them make them behave how you want them to behave come on hallelujah don't you wish you could customize them when they go to school they sit in front and they learn just like you did when you were a kid remember how you paid attention don't you wish you could customize your family? Don't you wish you could customize your spouse? <laughs> Some things are tricks. <laughs> Some things you don't respond to. You wait till when pastors speak, you wait. I'm sure Sister Sherry wish she could customize me. No, I'm all right. You taking long to answer. Amen. But life don't go like that. You don't get to make life the way you want it. I learned that I don't make God, I don't customize God's world for me. I've learned that God is actually customizing me I don't customize God God customizes me I don't make him into what I want him to be he makes me into what he wants me to be and he does it by the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life